Hello and welcome to Diaspora Connect on AAU TV. AAU TV is the voice of higher education in Africa. The diasporan community often laments about the fact that it's difficult to penetrate into an African market. There are no mechanisms or institutions to ensure that um, they are easily accessible and the market is easily accessible because governments haven't made that possible. But then in recent times, the government has been paying attention to the diaspora community and they are inviting them to come help and develop their home country but then the thing then again is that gdp growth doesn't provide food on the table it doesn't um give you a better standard of living it doesn't give your children a better education it doesn't really do anything but then the thing is that achieving inclusive growth and productive employment is at the top of the international and national agenda of developing and developed countries. It is in this bit that today we are discussing um, transitioning Uganda into a multiple that a multiple products destination with Mr. Santi Imenez. He is the Uganda Honorary Consul in Barcelona. It's going to be an interesting discussion. My name is Bridget Amadente. Do stay tuned. I'll be back shortly. So welcome back from the break. This again is Diaspora Connect where we prioritize the work of the diaspora in their home country. Discussing transitioning Uganda into a multiple product um, destination with Mr. Santi Imenez, the Uganda Honorary Consul in Barcelona. You can follow the conversation on Facebook Association of African Universities and then on YouTube Association of African Universities. It's a pleasure to have you here Mr. Santi Imenez. Bridget. Thanks for the, your invitation to allow me to, to have the opportunity to showcase, you, to showcase Uganda and also how can Uganda can uh, become from a mainly uh, receiver of tourists to become a multiple destination business opportunities yeah. country. Yeah. Uh, as you told me, I'm the Ugandan consul in Barcelona uh, since 2012. So I have been the consul since eight years ago, and I have been uh, linking, you know, not only Spanish, uh, Spain with Uganda, but also um, from uh, Ibero Ibero-American countries to mm -hmm. Uganda, because I'm one of the few not the consuls that uh, speaks Spanish. <laughs> so um, I have been also assisting my community to be adapted to, to Spain and also relating, you know, Ugandan companies with uh, Spanish companies. Okay. Also, I, I am a, a business advisor specialized in African countries, especially Uganda, which is my, <laughs> my country, to do business and to make possible, you know, you, African countries can develop. Okay. 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 So aside that, what, what other works do you do as a consul in uh, Barcelona? Yes, well, uh, as, as consul, you know, I have been uh, touching different areas. One of them is, you know, uh, assuring the Ugandan community has a good, uh, a good stay in, in Spain. You know, it means uh, in terms of administration issues, assisting them to get the, 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 um, the, the work permits. Right now, we are, we are in the process of getting for them uh, the passports, the new passports from okay. Uganda. We had, uh, I had the, 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 the big opportunity to, to have a, a, a good relationship with immigration passport control officer who allows us to get the passport from the consulate straight with uh, immigration authorities. And then the community is getting the passport on time because next year our passport are phased out completely. Wow. So as a consul, I was really concerned about the fact of my community was without daily passport to process uh, and to get the new uh, residence permit. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So I was very, uh, very busy with this. But at the same time, you know that uh, some, Ugand uh, some African countries have been in lockdown, uh, we have been closed, and then uh, most of us, we are opening the country. So of course, another of my uh, objectives was to communicate, to, uh, to update, you know, triple agencies, business community, uh, that Ugandan is back to business. The, the, okay. all, the borders has been open and we have been processing the visas again, facilitating updated information through the, the, the Ugandan consulate website. A apart from that, you know, I have been, you know, um, catching up, you know, the actuality uh, of Africa, uh, of course, observing, you know, the moves. And as, as, a, cons uh, as, an, uh, as a business advisor, I have been realizing about this important movement in the mindset of, uh, of uh, African governments. Eh? It is the fact of uh, it is okay to, to buy what we need, but we cannot stay, remain all the time buying from abroad. You know, when you buy from abroad, you increase your national debt. When you increase your national debt, you, you lock down yourself economically. Meaning that when you want to do something by yourself, you want to create a, a new university or you, or you want to improve your infrastructure, you cannot, you cannot get more loans because you are highly debt. You don't have resources from your own. So you lock down economically, even the development of the country for years. Yeah. So it is a matter of change the mindset and to think about which kind of country you want to have for the future generations. And according to this, that plan, this objective, you have to see the different steps of that path. Yeah. And the most basic is use your raw materials. The things that, that you have in, in your country, provide the industry to uh, give you know value uh, 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 value addition mm -hmm. that will allow you to create a healthy industry and there will be a point that you will be able to export just the opposite situation you were before a part of that you also are creating employment to job africa population is highly job in my country in uganda we are the second youngest population in the world so the, the 70 percent of Ugandans are less are below 30 years old. So these people, many of them are unlikely unemployed, looking for greener pastures abroad, like yeah. in other African countries. So we lose engineers, we lose nurses, we we lose doctors. People really prepare. They they they, they go abroad. It is USA. It is European Union. It is UK who get the benefit of them, yeah. not us. Yeah, Brain that's really. a big problem. Yeah, that's a big problem. Yeah, yeah, OK. So let's move into the discussion for today. The tell us the business landscape in Uganda over 20 years with regards to the services sector, the manufacturing center and even the agricultural sector. But let's start with the services sector. OK. You know, for, for the, service, the service sector that includes, you know, for instance, banking, tourism, uh, IT, you know, it is the most important uh, sector for, for Ugandan economy, especially, you know, when we talk about revenue, tax revenue yeah. and job creation, yeah. eh? you know, especially on the tourist sector. Okay. which have been, you know, the, 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 uh, the most important sector in terms of job creation. Because okay. of the lock lockdown caused by the coronavirus, uh, the COVID-19, the mm -hmm. country was locked down. It causes a lot of loss of incomes for the country, for the revenues, but also in terms of job, job uh, losses. Yeah. Right now, right now, we have opened the country. We are doing uh, high, uh, uh, big efforts to promote the country through the through Facebook, through uh, Twitter. So we also have been stimulating, you know, the the, the local tourists. Eh? Something that uh, African things is that. Uh, when you do tourism as an African person, you go abroad, you go to the States. <laughs> <laughs> this is not tourism as you Africans. Eh? Yeah. But we have nice countries, nice places to see. So it is a matter that we teach ourselves that maybe 300 kilometers away, you have 
a nice waterfall or you know or you see you know a, a nice place to spend the, the weekend with your children yeah. so we are as a country uh, the Uganda the Ugandan tourist is now trying to see a hey, we have a nice country it is not a country from for Basungu for the white people no it is no it is only a nice country even for us so yeah. you know you can go to Tena you can go to Accra you can go to Kumasi so you have nice places in Ghana for instance oh, to visit it is not just to go to London <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but it, it is it is a, 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 a it is a matter of mindset indeed okay. it is a matter of mindset african people we must see yeah. that we are able to do things we are able to reach things we are just a matter what i can what i what where i, I want to go yeah. which country i want to have and which That's are right. the steps to follow on yeah. that is it. it is you have to believe in yourself you have to think that in ghana in Ghana, we can do these things. As yeah. in Uganda, we can do things. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You know, if you follow some athletics, you have realized that Ugandan runners have achieved, you know, in the in the, in the, in the past year, you know, world records. Yeah. We couldn't imagine that we could reach this. But there was some people that thought that I can run faster than Ethiopian. I can run faster than Kenyans, which is a miracle, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> They believe that they could do it. Mm. And you know what? Ugandans are the record men because they believe they could do it. They put all their efforts and they got it. So okay. nothing is impossible. Okay. Nothing is impossible. Okay. Okay. So now to the manufacturing and then the agricultural sector, the landscape. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, on on, manuf on manufacturing, you know, it is a key it is a key sector for us, even for any African country. What I will explain about Uganda can be extrapolated to any African country for sure. You know, manufacturing is key because allows to get to transfer or raw materials, you know, materials we have in our countries. We don't have to import eh? things we have in our country. We can transfer in a finished product that yeah. we can use in our own country so we stop the importing eh? we reduce the external debt but also the the uh, the remaining can be the excellent can be exported so we get money we get richness in our country that allows us if we invest properly to give benefits in different ways in a better education in a better health system in transforming or or or, or uh, the 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 transport uh, nets, for instance, so all of this is very very important. Yeah. We need to we need the assistance of of um, foreign investment, but also local investment. We need to think. We need to believe in ourselves. Eh, in investing in our own countries. Let me put you an example, Nigeria. Uh, if, if you know something about uh, the, the most important companies, if I say Dangote, Dangote company is who? It's a Nigerian company. Dangote, yeah. uh, it all takes the, the name from, from the owner. Uh, Mr. Dangote has invested a lot of money in its own, in his own country. You see, you have to believe in your own things. Eh? If you have a house, you have money but you buy a better house abroad where you go only one or two times per year nobody knows you even you don't enjoy you you get your house modify your house put yeah. better your house enjoy yeah. the house be proud of your own house that's your problem mm. that's yeah. our problem we yeah. don't think about yeah. our home that's yeah. the thing yeah. So yeah. manufacturing, uh, manufacturing uh, industry is key. We need it. Yeah. We okay. need it. Okay. And let me let me put the attention in something that usually when we, we when we usually talk about um, investments, a development of countries, we didn't see, we didn't put the attention on this. Let me put the, the focus on education. Yeah. How can you attract investors? To your country you can give for free land 
it is okay. You can give a tax exception for five years, 10 years. It is very good. But when a foreigner comes with 3 million USA dollars to do an investment in a factory, cars factory, for instance, eh, automotive um, industry, then this man comes and says, okay, let me see who can be uh, the engineer for my project. And this man realizes that the system, that the educative system is very weak. Yeah. Do you really think that you will find an African engineer? No. Yeah. And you see that in many international projects, you see the typical USA engineer, the British engineer, the French engineer. And you see, but don't we have proper engineers in our country? You know the answer is that people is abroad. They finish the, 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 the degree in, in his home country, but because they didn't have, you know, a not good op business, uh, um, opportunities. job opportunities, yeah. they to USA. They are working now in a USA company. So when they, 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 they come to their home country, it is as an engineer of a foreign company, never from a local one. Yes, yes. So this is another problem. Then, you know, the investors looks for different specialities and you know, there are no enough vocational training in schools yeah. for that industry. So of course, this investor has two options, bringing expats or moving to another country that offers this vocational training in schools. Vocational training, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is basic. This is basic. Yeah. If I was an investor, I will look for which country offer a, a, a range variety of vocational training in schools. And I will see if my project has good skilled people in the country. Okay, okay. That, that would, that would help. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you touched on yeah, it is, you know, at the end, it is, it is a matter of develop, you develop your own country, you attract the investors. Yeah, okay, 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 that is good. Just like in Ghana, we are promoting Ghana these days, so we promote our food and everything, and, you know, with the year of return, it has attracted a whole lot of diasporas to come back home to help their home country. So I like the fact yes, that- it is, it, is, it is a good program. You know, they are <laughs> focused on the, of the Ghanaian who live yeah. in diaspora in USA mainly. I, yes. saw, I, saw the, I saw an article about this. This is, yeah. this is a, a good idea. This is yes. a good idea. Yeah. Also, okay. another sector which is important for any African yeah. country, but especially for Uganda, it is the agricultural one. You know, in, in Uganda, uh, agriculture um, keeps busy, you know, many people, but not to, 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 to produce and sell. No, it is just for self-consumption. It is just for surviving. Yeah. So what's happening? You know, we have some fruits that uh, we lose it. So you, you see how they grow up, they fall down and they, and, and they, and they are uh, spoiled. But yeah. you see in other countries, they are well appreciated. So the question is, why something that is well appreciated abroad here in, in our country, it's spoiled, you know, in the, yeah. in, in, on, on the floor? Yeah. Because we have to professionalize, we have to industrialize, you know, the, uh, the, the, the agricultural sector. It is the okay. so-called agribusiness. So yeah, that involves, you know, a big uh, uh, business opportunity for those countries who are highly experienced in agricultural sector. For instance, Mediterranean countries, for instance, like Spain, France, uh, Italy, those countries have a, a big, uh, also some um, Ibero-American countries have opportunities there to help to develop. Because, you know, one day you will see that when you want to sell something to Africa, mm -hmm. it will be very expensive. You know why? Because right now the governments are thinking about let us grow ourselves. So yes. let us have a factory and create our own buses, for instance. Let me give you an example. In Uganda, we have a company called Chira, Chira mm -hmm. Automotive. It is a, a, a private company, but the government has a 40% shares. Okay. Chira Automotive is to uh, make a factory, uh, it is to 
to manufacture buses okay eh, for the for the for the um, greater Kampala area mm? okay and it's, and also, also inside the, the central Kampala district okay. what's happening since uh, uh, some some months ago you could import to Uganda a bus right mm. now you cannot Wow. You cannot import a bus. You know why? Because now we are factoring. We are manufacturing the, the buses. buses. Yeah. So, like this, this is an example other African countries could do for any other product. So, now here comes a good question. Mm -hmm. If I'm a foreign business person and I want to do business with Africa, in some time can be months maybe years probably mm -hmm. i cannot do business with africa yeah no you know why because the taxes the customs taxes will be higher right. yeah. to protect this yeah. industry this local industry which is growing slowly slowly eh? this mm -hmm. is called protectionist in yeah. the economy yeah so at the end of the day if you want to do business in Africa, you have to be in Africa. Africa. You have to be part of the movement. Yeah. Because yeah. remember, what's happening in, in January, the next coming year? It is the AFTA. Yeah. I was just it's about to coming. mention that. Yeah, it's coming. Uh -huh. It is coming to be in force eh, we have a delay of six months because of the, the coronavirus and the like but you know recently the past week eh, nigeria one of the most important countries who didn't sign the after has signed finally yes. decided to to join to yes. join the community yes. so we are talking about one of them of one of the most important economic communities in the world exactly so exactly. it is very important to be part of it before you are out of. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. See? So if you are if you are if you are a, an, a smart businessman, be part of. Yes. Be part of it, yeah. Africa. Yeah. That's that's the that's the trick, <laughs> the <laughs> advice right now. Free advice. <laughs> yeah, right. Free advice. Yes. I should be paid, yes. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are going. It to is a very it. useful free advice. Eh? Yes, yes, very useful. So but we are going on Africa a quick break. To be fun. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We are going on a quick break, and then when we come back, we can go into the policy direction to grow the Ugandan economy. This is still the Astra Connects on AAU TV. Please do stay tuned. Welcome back from the short break. This is still Diaspora Connect on AAU TV, still discussing transitioning Uganda into a multi product destination with Mr. Santi Menes. I know you are enjoying the conversation, so let's continue. Mr. Santi Menes, we left off at, and then, um, then we are moving on. So we are talking about the policy direction to grow the Ugandan economy. What policy direction is Uganda taking to grow the economy? Okay, uh, for, for Uganda, uh, since uh, two years ago, approximately, the government decided to create a policy called BUBU. That means buy Uganda, build Uganda. Eh? So wow. buy products from Uganda to build the industry of Uganda. That's the real meaning of the, of the word. And this has to be a policy uh, to boost the use of Ugandan products. For instance, the administration started to uh, reserve part of the bids to dom for domestic bids. Even for those international bids, part of the suppliers must be local Ugandan suppliers. Eh? Also, you know, the administration uh, has, to, has to manage to uh, use local products. 
okay. instead of going to import from abroad. Eh? Then uh, also, um, uh, the, uh, lately, you know, with this uh, coronavirus uh, yeah. crisis, you know, the economy, like many other, uh, other countries, you know, became very, very, very damaged, uh, awakened. And uh, the thing is that uh, right now, the, go the, gover the Bank of Uganda reduced the, 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 the rates of the loans to the commercial banks to 7%, so that the commercial banks could reduce at the same time their commercial rates. Eh? Okay. So that was uh, uh, that was uh, one of the of these uh, measures. Also, you know, uh, the government uh, 